what I'm doing as a scientist is I'm suggesting that, well, I'm trying to understand a specific scientific problem, which is, for me, it's, it's called the hard problem of consciousness. And I'm trying to think of a theory of reality that will allow me to solve this hard problem of consciousness. The problem is this. We have a lot of interesting data that gives us correlations between certain kinds of brain activity and certain conscious experiences that we have. So for example, we know that if, if I take a powerful magnet called a, trans mag, a transcranious magnetic stimulator and touch it to a part of the skull that's just next to an area called V4, and if I inhibit my neural activity in that area, immediately all color will drain from the left part of my visual world. I'll just see shades of gray. I'll still see color in the right part of the visual world, but not in the left. Then you turn off the magnet and color comes flowing back in. So there's this very interesting correlation between interference with neural activity in the, in the, the right hemisphere and loss of certain kind of conscious experience in the left visual world. We can do that with motion. If I put this stimulator over an area called V5, I can turn off my ability to experience motion in the left visual field. And, and it turns out that in, in the science of, you know, cognitive neuroscience, we've discovered scores, maybe hundreds, of these kinds of correlations. So correlations are the raw data. This brain activity is correlated with that conscious experience. And of course, correlations are not a theory. Rooster crows are correlated with sunrises. But that's not a theory. For example, does a rooster crow cause a sunrise? Well, no. That's, we would tend to think it might go the other way. But, but it's hard to go from correlations to a genuine theory of what's causing it. You might say, well, so for example, we know that brain activity that we can measure with EEG, electroencephalograms, we can predict your choices that you'll make in certain cases, your free will choices, um, seven seconds before you can tell me what you're going to choose. So here again, brain activity is cleanly correlated with your experience seven seconds later of a choice that you're making. So here again, we have this correlation. And in this case, you might say, well, okay, here clearly the theory is the brain activity came first, the experience of feeling like you had a free will choice came a few seconds later, so clearly the brain activity had to cause it, and that's too quick. Another example, counterexample is, if you look at a train station, a bunch of people uh, assemble at the train station, a few minutes later the train appears. Did the people coming to the train station cause the train to appear? No, they didn't. So even though the correlation is tight, Every time a group of people appears, a train appears a few minutes later, it's not the case that the people appearing cause the train to appear. There's some third entity, namely a train schedule, that's coordinating both. So we have to be very, very careful. When we have correlations, that's not the same thing as a theory. And then the final example is, um, you might say, well, look, when you actually take that magnet and stimulate area V4, or inhibit it, you're intervening. And by intervening, we can actually figure out what's causing what. Right? So you turn off V4, color goes away. Surely that shows that V4 causes the color experience. And that's also too fast. If I'm in a virtual reality game like Grand Theft Auto and I've got a steering wheel, I can say, look, I can intervene. I can turn the steering wheel to the left. That will make the car turn to the left. Therefore, the, the steering wheel is real and it really does have an effect on a real car. No. It's not. There's, again, a hidden reality of diodes and resistors, all the circuits, that's mediating this. It only, we only have the fiction of intervening and a fiction of causality. So the problem we have in the hard problem of consciousness is this. Scientists have gotten dozens, maybe hundreds, of these tight correlations. We do not have a theory. We cannot explain why Neural activity is correlated with conscious experiences. And in particular, we cannot for a single conscious experience, like say, by conscious experience, I mean something really simple, like having a headache, experiencing color, the taste of vanilla. The theories that are proposed are basically only believed by the graduate students of the professor who proposes them. And, and no theory that's been proposed can even predict 
or, or specify the conditions for a single experience, like the taste of vanilla. If, so if you think that neural activity causes the taste of vanilla, uh, precisely what neural activity is causing the taste of vanilla and how does it do it, no one has any idea. Or if, if they say that um, neural activity is identical to the taste of vanilla, then as a scientist I want to say, okay, tell me with mathematical precision, what exactly is the, the neural activity that's identical to vanilla and why is it identical? I mean, it's, anybody can say anything. You know, I can say the moon is identical to, to blue cheese and just stipulate it. Presumably, you need to give me some reason why I should believe in the identity. So they can't specify the identity and, and much less say why the identity should be plausible. So that's the problem that we've got. It's, it's a really deep, open scientific problem. And it's very personal. We all have conscious experiences. We would like to understand what's, and we also, we also have brains. We'd like to understand what's happening here. What's, why, are, why are these correlations there? For more debates, talks, and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.